This is the final demo for the DLSS Access Team's uh, recent work cycle to support the Digital Library of the Middle East, or DLME. Uh, the DLME uh, project is a partnership with the Council on Library and Information Resources, or CLEAR, uh, and funded by uh, the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation. Uh, our main objective in this work cycle was to enable a fully operational spotlight instance that serves a range of uh, current partner and potential contributor needs for the display, management, and growth of deposited content related to the Middle East. Uh, this work, along with a short final effort in early 2020, will lead to the relaunch and associated publicity for the DLME site by March 2020. Although the focus of um, this demo is on the Access Team's recent DLME work cycle, uh, I do want to note that this work cycle built on work done earlier this year by the DLSS infrastructure team and CLEAR to uh, conduct user interviews um, and create uh, some personas of um, different expected DLME site users. And more recently, a lot of work uh, by the uh, infrastructure team on data transformation uh, that basically cleaned up the DLME source data uh, so that it was in a state that the access team could work with as we develop the DLME site features. So DLME is a project that is uh, quite similar to other recent DLSS projects in that it's based on Spotlight. But it, it does involve quite a few new features and challenges that I'll cover in this demo. Um, as I start navigating through the different pages of the DLME site, um, I do want to note that the visual styling you see is not intended to be the final styling of the site. We'll be doing some updates to the site, uh, masthead image, um, and uh, color palette, and uh, maybe some other minor uh, visual styling things. Uh, the basic site structure is fairly similar to many Spotlight sites. Uh, we have four main pages uh, as reflected in the main menu. Uh, we're looking at the home page right now. Uh, the content here um, you know, will likely change a little bit before the relaunch, um, as well as some typical about pages that uh, we may uh, update a little bit before the relaunch in 2020. Uh, we also have a browse page, which is, again, quite similar to what you see in many Spotlight sites. Although for DLME, we decided, at least for the 2020 launch, uh, to focus all the browse, browse categories on dates, uh, which is reflected in the label we gave it in the main menu. Uh, this is because we expect dates to be the primary, a primary way users um, search and discover DLME items uh, and these categories will be an easy way for new users in particular to quickly get a search results page and to navigate to um, uh, item detail pages. Uh, the statistics page is a new feature that we've created specifically for DLME. This is a public facing uh, view of some significant uh, site metrics. Uh, the idea here is to enable uh, site visitors and possibly potential future content contributors to get a high level overview of the size of the site in terms of uh, the number of items and a sense of how those items are distributed by type uh, and by language. Uh, the contributor section of the statistics page uh, reflects something a bit different about DLME in that DLME is an aggregation of item records from many different contributing org institutions. So here's one place where site visitors can see where item records uh, originate. So that's the basic uh, site structure. Uh, and I wanna uh, turn to some of the more significant features and challenges of this uh, work cycle. So uh, one uh, core feature uh, for this project is to, or core requirement of this project, is to provide the entire site in Arabic in addition to English. We've worked on multilingual sites before and we have this nice feature in Spotlight uh, that uh, enables us to add a new language uh, to the site but providing support for Arabic in particular created a couple of major challenges. 
So first, uh, Arabic is a new language to uh, Blacklight, Spotlight, and other gems included in Spotlight, such as the Backlight Gallery. So we first needed to um, uh, basically create new locale files, add new locale files to all of these, these projects to um, get the Arabic translations um, from, from those projects uh, to show up in DLME. We also need to get Arab, uh, Arabic translations for uh, our page content, such as the home and about pages, uh, the metadata field labels, um, uh, search field labels, and so on. Uh, these translation requirements uh, came up continually through the work cycle as we added new features, and we are very lucky to have the Qatar National Library uh, providing us with quick and thorough Arabic translations uh, throughout this work cycle. So the um, Arabic language requirement uh, raised even a bigger challenge for us in that it is a right to left language. And so as I go up here and switch our uh, locale language to Arabic, uh, you'll see that um, all the page, the page content changes from a left to right display to a right to left display. Um, this, uh, there are many challenges associated with doing this. Um, such as uh, making sure that uh, relevant icons uh, are their orientation is flipped uh, from left to right to right to left, um, that uh, spacing um, of some elements um, that had uh, margin or padding on the right now have margin or padding on the left, uh, and so on. Uh, we were helped a lot in this effort by a bootstrap right to left library, um, but the team still had to put a lot of effort into verifying and fine tuning uh, the right to left display. There may be a few places uh, where we still have some um, uh, minor updates to, to do to get the complete right to left um, uh, feature um, finished, uh, but by and large, um, I think we've, we've um, done a pretty thorough job in enabling this site to be looked at in uh, right to left uh, orientation. I'm gonna switch back to English. And I wanna talk about one other um, language related uh, or multilingual related um, issue um, having to do with the range of languages used to describe uh, DLME records. So as I show some um, example uh, item show page, show pages, uh, you'll see that many of the items in uh, DLME are made up of uh, metadata fields that uh, are either in English or Arabic, or most often some combination of English and Arabic. Uh, and for example, in this, this case, we see that we're in English locale, we see English values, but uh, the subject field is all in Arabic, um, as is the rights field uh, here. And um, we even have cases where uh, some of the metadata fields are in languages other than English or Arabic, such as Turkish. If I go to a record here, you'll see uh, some of the, the values, uh, well, not too much here, but some of the records have more values than this that are in, that are in Turkish. So uh, we dealt with this, um, and let me go back to an Arabic example here. I'll go to this one. Um, so our challenge here was to, we wanted to try to provide the appropriate uh, language values based on the locale, either English or Arabic, that the user was uh, currently using the site in. Um, so, uh, for example, this record here had, as I mentioned, subject and rights are only in Arabic. Um, and even though we're in an English locale, we never want to omit values um, just because they're not in the current locale. 
uh, and this is because some some researchers of uh, Middle East material are are uh, can read Arabic fine, even if they prefer to look at the site in English. They they can read Arabic, and so we don't want to omit uh, these values uh, for these fields, even though they're only in Arabic. If I switch this uh, record to Arabic locale, you'll see that uh, we still have the the um, Arabic values for the subject in the rights field, uh, but there are also some other fields here that are now in Arabic that previously were in English. So basically we, we did a lot of work to uh, make sure that we display the metadata values for the item records um, optimally for uh, the locale that the user um, is looking at the site in. As I'll show in a minute, um, there's a related, a related issue, which is um, uh, the two calendar systems that are relevant uh, for the DLME uh, records. So this is the, um, well, all of our previous DLSS projects uh, display dates uh, defined by the Gregorian calendar. Uh, but we expect many users of the DLME site, not just those viewing the site in Arabic, uh, to be used to using um, or be used to be doing Middle East related research involving dates represented by the Hijri count. So uh, to support these users, um, all uh, DLME items uh, show uh, the dates, uh, the date range of the item in both uh, the Gregorian calendar and the Hijri calendar uh, versions of the date. So we do this on both the search results page um, and the item show pages. And as I'll show in a minute, uh, the DLME visitors also have the option of searching uh, using a date range facet uh, using either the Gregorian or the Hidri uh, calendar. So with uh, most Blacklight and Spotlight sites, uh, users can initiate a search query from the facet sidebar on the homepage. Um, and DLME has, uh, offers some of the typical uh, facets for, for searching and browsing, such as time period, we have geographic region, uh, medium, language, uh, and the holding institution of the record. Uh, but we also have, have uh, done some extra work on a couple of other facets uh, to be more useful to site, site visitors. So the first of these is the object type facet. And we made this into a hierarchical facet. So there are many different specific types of DLME items, uh, but rather than presenting a flat list of many item types, we created this hierarchical facet uh, where all item types are distributed into a small number of top level categories. And the benefit of this is we're able to um, uh, keep the, the, this facet from being uh, too long, make it easier to work with, and it gives users more flexibility because they can, they can select um, both the high level facet uh, value and the the uh, subtypes of the different uh, types. So uh, this required some up work, uh, work upstream in the Blacklight Hierarchy Jam, but overall we're, we think this provides the user with a better way to um, search by um, object type. And then the second facet I wanted to cover is the date range facet that I mentioned earlier. So dates uh, in particular are very important in DLME and also very messy. So if I quickly look at a, um, uh, go back to a, um, an item show page. Yeah, here, so you'll see that we show a field called source date. And so this is the, the, the format, the date came to us from the, the contributing organization. And we still show that because there's, you know, could be useful information in this date. But if I go and um, just find a different example, just to try to show you the range of values we get here, um, the source date 
that are provided by the contributing organization um, come in many different different variations. Um, and so there's really no standardization of those formats, which makes it hard for us to, to, to work with um, when we want to show them in a consistent way. So um, the DLS uh, infrastructure team did a substantial amount of work to normalize these source states uh, for all the DLME records. And so now this enabled us to uh, do things like create this date range uh, value where we can uh, reliably convert that source uh, date information into a reliable range of the Gregorian image recalendars. Um, so the other benefit is we can now uh, uh, give users access or enable the users to search uh, based on date using the uh, date range facets. And so we actually have two date range facets, one using the Hidri calendar and one if they want to use the Gregorian account. Um, to make this uh, gem more useful, the date range uh, gem more useful to DLME users, we made several updates to it, uh, including support for negative or uh, BCE in the Gregorian calendar and pre year one dates in the Hidri calendar. Uh, we also rearranged the elements of the, the facet panel uh, to make uh, the UI more compact and clear. Uh, and more, most significantly, we added this option to view the date range facet larger, uh, where we present it in a modal window, uh, which makes the, the facet wider um, and gives the user a little bit more real estate to work with. Um, and um, makes it a little easier given the really broad range of, of dates in DLME, uh, makes it easier for the user to uh, fine tune uh, the date range that they're, they're interested in. Um, and let's see, the last feature I wanna show uh, that we've added is support for uh, DLME exhibit items that uh, have a triple F manifest associated with them. So if I navigate to uh, a contributing organization that I know provide triple F manifests, um, we'll see that uh, when I go to the item show page for this, um, this record, uh, we get a Mirador 3 uh, viewer uh, for the item. Uh, we need to do a little more visual style on this page to make it look better, but you can see we have a, a Mirador 3 viewer here that enables us to, to zoom in on the, 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 um, the image of the item. We have access to all of the IIIF metadata that is part of the, the manifest here. Uh, and um, and yeah, so when a IIIF manifest is provided, we, we show it in this viewer. By comparison for uh, items that uh, don't have a IIIF manifest, uh, when we go to the show page for those items, uh, the items details page, um, we get a more standard uh, sort of layout with uh, the thumbnail of the item and the metadata uh, next to it. One sort of new thing for DLME that we've added to this item detail page, um, because of the nature of DLME with uh, multiple con um, uh, contributing organizations providing the item metadata to us, uh, but these items uh, still exist on those contributing organizations' own website. Uh, you'll see we have this uh, provider website uh, field with uh, the URL uh, at which you can go and see this, this item in the context of the contributor, uh, the contributing organization's uh, website. Let's see, and I'll finish this demo um, by mentioning that a big part of the DLME uh, work cycle involved work that was done in upstream gems or applications, as I've already touched on a little bit. Um, we've made uh, significant uh, updates to the Blacklight Gallery, the Blacklight Embed gem, the Blacklight Hierarchy gem, and Mirador 3. 
Um, but probably the largest chunk of work was related to Bootstrap 4. Uh, so during this work cycle, we cut a release of Blacklight 7, and then we made a lot of updates to Spotlight that brought it up to date with Blacklight 7 and Bootstrap 4. So Spotlight adds a lot of UI elements to Blacklight, um, and this was a, so this was a pretty substantial amount of work. We have um, a page and a half of closed issues here that we've done during spotlight issues that we've done during this work cycle that were basically, uh, well, most of them were just trying to get spotlight um, up to date with uh, Bootstrap 4. Of course, the good news for DLME is all this work, um, not only do we contribute to upstream applications, but DLME is completely uh, up to date with uh, Blacklight 7 and the latest uh, major version of, of Bootstrap. And then finally, uh, because DLME is an AWS cloud-based implementation of Spotlight, uh, in the course of this work cycle, we've improved uh, support for running Spotlight in a cloud environment. Uh, so specifically, we've um, improved the ability um, uh, to configure feedback uh, emails uh, that are sent through this form. Uh, we've improved the exhibit export feature, uh, including the ability to disable portions of it. And we've um, added Google Analytics support in a cloud environment. So this will enable DLME administrators to see uh, this uh, sort of high level Google Analytics based um, summary and make it easier for future uh, cloud-based Spotlight implementations to get their Google Analytics page working. So I think that uh, wraps up uh, this final demo for the DLME work cycle. Uh, thanks for watching and look for the relaunch of the DLME site in spring of 2020.